Hi there YouTube and makers and welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for joining me and spending your time with me. I'm really happy and excited to bring to you the final, yes final, installment of tramming in this mill. It took a little bit of doing but I think I got it and I think I got it dialed in perfectly and I'm really excited to show you how I kind of go through that process to tram in the tooling plate provided by Shareline, well, not provided by because I paid for it, so made by Shareline, as well as their vice. Special shout out and thank you to everyone who posts and leave comments. I really appreciate it because your comments really help me to figure things out and to de develop my process. And in fact, here I'll be showing you some information that I got from a commenter that helped me to kind of figure this out and dial it in. So please comment below. I'd love to hear from you and I'd really appreciate the opportunity for us to have an exchange and to be able to learn from each other. So come on over here and join me at the bench. Let's get the rest of this mill trammed in so we can get it ready to make some chips. This aluminum plate came out just absolutely beautiful. I didn't modify it. I didn't do anything to it. It was just a really nice piece of ram I found. You'll notice there's some extra holes on here and that's because of the advice of uh, Reach 41. Give me some ideas about how to fix and improve upon the weight cover. So I've got my two holes here that these ones are for attaching the mill to. And I'm hoping these additional holes to come up with something as yet to be determined to improve upon the way covers sit. So I've got holes for the mill. These two bigger ones are for tightening and loosening the milk all them and these two will be accessories somehow to attach to the uh, weight covers as you can see I, I really love the way this clear coat anodized came out it's just absolutely beautiful a few little dinks here and there that were there from it being a rim but it just looks really really nice I'm really hoping that attaching it to this nice piece of rim is going to cure some of my issues that I encountered with tramming and really stabilize this thing and help me from dumping it over. So first and foremost, I've got to clean this thing and I'm going to give it a good wipe down. I've already put a little splash of acetone on this blue rag and make sure there's no chips or anything that might have been picked up by it. While I did clean my table really well, it, there's always something to get grabbed by it and the hardest part I think is going to get get it on there but uh, I'm just using whatever pan head screws I have on hand I'm going to be converting over to socket head whenever I get a chance to find some that fit and I've already covered over in a little bit of detail the uh, tooling plate in my previous videos so I won't labor it too too much but it's really nice in that it is countersunk and pre-done so there's nothing that needs to be done to figure it out in order to mount it. No additional machining or drilling or countersinking. It's just a nice fit with a bit of a little bit of play built into it to go right onto the Sherline. Now, it Sherline does say that you are free to and you should or I should feel free to mill and tap on this plate where I want to because that's its purpose. So if I ever need it for some other creative fixturing, I'm definitely going to be doing that. I do have to say I'm a little bit worried. I have a hard enough time lining up the T-slots on my lathe with it. So hopefully having these six isn't going to be too laborious. This plate can only mount on the table from one direction. And I need to be conscious of this hole here for the oiler to make sure that it doesn't end up on the back because this plate can be put on with it on the front or back, but there's only one oiler access hole. Not too, too bad getting into the T-slots. Again, this is the thing I was the most worried about because it took so long. It takes me so many tries to get it lined up for some reason. But I do encounter a little bit of a problem, but that's neither here nor there. It's a kind of a nut behind the hand wheel sort of an issue. But it was I'm fiddling around, it eventually gets into place and lines up and slides on. Really smooth, really nice, but not yet because I just can't figure out how to get this last set of T-nuts lined up. And that's the most embarrassing part, but it's on. So I'm just gonna get it roughly eyeballed in. Now I'm gonna be using the 
hundredths side on my scale here to kind of get it lined up. And that should be good enough, I think, trying to get it in there with the hundredth. And it is correlated with the Euler hole in that when I got it within a hundredth, looking down in that Euler hole, it does appear to be perfectly centered on the Euler. When tightening this down, I'm not going to get it super duper tight. I'm just going to get it in there roughly. And shirt line and instructions are very clear not to over tighten because it will damage the T-slots on the mill table. I have found that these T-nets will break away, but I don't think they break away under the correct torque soon to where they break away that before any damage is done to the either the lathe or the mill table. I am using the T-handled wrench as a bit of a torque wrench in that before it gets too heavy on the torque, it, I do feel it where the plastic just begins to bend and I know that once that happens I've probably started to over torque things. Speaking of torque, I do follow a pattern and I base mine off a six lug tire because there's six bolts here and six lugs on a wheel pattern as you can see from this picture from Le Schwab tire and I squish that down and project that over the bolts I try to do it I don't always do it but I do follow it up with about three torque sessions for these pins that came from Shermline there are five slots front and back but it only comes with four pins Sherline lists these as quarter inch by one inch dowel pins, and they are available as replacements from Sherline. But in their description, I didn't see anything that indicated they were precision ground. So I think I'm going to go get some precision ground from my local tool shop. And since there's so many spare holes, I can put my vise on the for far side here. Um, me personally, I think I'm going to go with these pins more in the middle. So it brings everything kind of more in the middle of the, the tooling play. Of course, I have to struggle with my T-nuts, my eternal enemy. But when I finally get it on there, I'm going to really lightly bring it down because I am going to loosen it just in case if I decide to use shim stick on the vise either in the front or along the uh, pins but first I'm gonna try by rotating the tooling plate and I'm gonna give it a really light little finger torque like you see here so that the t-nets bite but I'm able to as you can see slide around the tooling plate and hopefully take up the slack and get it all butt it up nice and tight against itself so it might be less inclined to slip now I've got to use my indicator again and begin all over again with tramming this time the vise um, one thing I did notice I'm a bit at odds with the vise is that these screws are on the hard jaw and as you could see from this unbranded import version this toolmaker small prison vice that's a knockoff of a Herman Schmidt have them on the mobile jaw or rather the jaw that clamps against the workpiece and the Sherline vice I am able to remove the jaws and switch them around and I think that's definitely something I'm going to try out here in a little bit and put the solid against the hard jaw and screws against the clamping jaw but hopefully that won't throw off alignment too too much now I've already torqued it down after this change and I'm running about three to four thousandths off without any alignment or tapping so it needs some adjustment so I'm gonna give it a couple of light wraps on the corner front corner here and bring my indicator in, load it up five thousandths, and it made a difference. Tightened it up about a thou, couple, 
So it's still off by a couple now. So I'm going to try and tap it the other way. And I'm going to grab it and try to push it as well as tap at the same time. And see if that makes it a little bit more controllable or makes a little a difference. Unfortunately, though, it did bring in alignment, but only about a thou. And I'm going to try some hand pressure here. And what I'm doing is I'm using the meaty part of my hand and gripping the dovetails with my fingers and just kind of pulling and pushing. That take up, took up a little bit, but I found that using this hand pressure technique is very inconsistent. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tighten this one rear T-nut. And because of that, I'm within a couple thou, I want to reduce the radius that the solid or hard jaw can rotate. If I needed to make a bigger adjustment, then maybe I would tighten the T-nut that's in the front and leave the rear one loose. And that should give me a greater radius to kind of rotate the jaw around. And give it a couple of light taps right here and seeing where it brings it, because I think the, the side needs to be brought in. And what I am noticing here, there seems to be an edge right here or burr. So there is a jump and it is noticeable. So I'm going to have to probably address that or rather dress it with a precision ground tool, tool stone, but they're kind of pricey. So I'm save up for that. So I'm going to tap on this side because it seems like it might the last tap might have overdoing it in the opposite direction. I think it's working. I think it's working. Oh, wow. It's really not fluctuating. It's really not moving. I should say there is fluctuation less than with the needle, but that's an oscillation that's associated with the handle. So let's torque the guy down. I'm going to use my same Les Schwab six bolt lug tire pattern and kind of torque them down a few times, make sure they're all down. And let's see if uh, tightening it up and this torque job ta cause anything to shift. And I'm not seeing it. I'm actually seeing even less play, I believe. And what oscillation there is, movement in that needle, has to do with the rotation of the hand wheel. That might be it. Got this thing in. It's well within a thou, maybe within a quarter thou, I would say. So let's put this uh, last T nut and clamp. But I can't. I messed up. I've got the vise too far back, and the bolt will not interact with this hole. And the next set of bolt holes are too far back. So hopefully all this isn't for naught, and hopefully it'll tighten up, and it'll be a little bit less adjustment to have to fuss with, but we'll see. So, I don't know, maybe at this point I might use shims, but the whole point of moving the tooling plate and not having shims is that if something like this were to happen or to make an adjustment, then I wouldn't have to go through a lot of trying different size shims and positions of shims. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to push the vise against the pins and push the clamp against the vise and draw that hex key bar and tighten up. I do want to point out that this cap head is acting as a sort of pseudo alignment pin. And that's something to think about is that it will chew up the sanitizer and it will wear out the back of the vise and damage it and cause variation down the road. So I want to have it off the vise like a thou, just a little bit, so it doesn't damage that anodizing. So let's see how we are with the line. Oh, so far so good. I'm shocked. There's really no less change of fluctuation. I mean, 
It is. That needle's not really even moving a quarter thou. And again, that what fluctuation there is is has to do with the oscillation and rotation of the hand wheel. I'm very happy. These are going to be good pins, and I think that shows that this vise is well made and well machined. So now, let's check out the ball on the uh, rear jaw and bring it up and down and see what its uh, alignment is. And it's in between the groove and the back of it. It looks good. I'm going to check the parallelism now and see how either side of the vise looks. So I'm going to overload it and bring it back about to zero, but I want to leave a little bit so that when I tighten up the that gib on the saddle, or the rather saddle lock, it takes up about three quarters to half the thou. And try that again, you can see how much that saddle lock moves. So nice on zero, and now I'm going to bring it back across the vise, see how parallel either side is, and so far it looks really good on that side. Yeah, try not to drop the ball down and hammer my indicator, and slowly bring it up and not jam it in there. And really not really any difference not much more than the thickness of the blade of the blade or rather the needle well in earth out so let's take a swing and see what it looks like going up front oh look at that Florence going about three thousands but for this first part on the journal boxes I'm really concerned about this back area because that's where it's going to sit and all the machine's going to be. So I'm hoping we can get away with it and not scrap some part and try smelling, but I'm curious if there's going to be a difference with this other side. And swinging it out, here's about a thou and a half thou. And on the edge, about 2,000. So it's interesting that this one is a little bit less of a climb towards the front. So it might not be the vise, maybe it's the table and I need to do some precision ground stone work in these areas and or maybe a little bit of shin work, possibly put like a thou back here in this corner. Might make the difference and level it off. But that's not too, too big of a deal, but hopefully I can get away with it. Again, I only need to put one journal box on one side of this vise and it'll fit in this space. And I'm hoping that's not going to translate into a lot of a run out in the journal box. And what run out there is will be a thou, maybe less. And hopefully that doesn't affect squareness. But I've had to see till I start to take that cut. That is it. I think that is decently trammed in. Not absolutely perfect, as you saw, there's a little bit of swing going in the front of the vise, but that's certainly something that, as I kind of work through things and develop, I'll kind of address and see if I can get a little bit dialed in. But I think I'm at a good enough place now that I should be able to make a perfectly square square. Well, at least a square that Euclid would be proud of to call his own. I'm really looking forward to showing you the first chips that I make on this mill. So be sure to hit that subscribe button as well as a bell notification so you don't miss when those videos post. Thank you so much for spending your time with me. I really appreciate it. Till next time, have fun out there, stay safe, and keep making chips.